Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for February 20th, 2024. So right now I'm teaching a series on laser focus, and I'm teaching you about having a laser focus on the fixed purpose that God has established for us from the foundations of the world. So God has been to your future. God has been to the end of 2024. God already knows what he wants us collectively and individually to do this particular year. So what we want to do is, to, is discover that. We want, to, we want to find it, follow it, and finish it. We want to discover it, develop it, deploy it to it. We want to maximize 2024 for the glory of God. We want to become the men and women that God has called us to be for such a time as this. So I've been teaching you from Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 25. At the beginning of the year, I gave you about 20 other scriptures, and then we've been doing a deep dive on those along with Proverbs 4 and 25. One of those scriptures is Ephesians 2 and 10. We've been looking at Proverbs 4 and 25 and Ephesians 2 and 10 for days. We're going to go back to it again today. Ephesians 2 and 10 is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. I'm going to be talking to you today about burning the boats. The title of today's message is Burning Boats and Cutting Away Options. Put in the chat, I burn all boats, I cut away all options, the discipline required for your destiny. For you to become the best version of yourself, for you to maximize your purpose and potential while you're in the land of the living, for you to get out of you everything that God deposited on the inside of you, it requires discipline. It requires determination. It requires grit, faith, and patience. So there is discipline required for your destiny, and I'm going to talk about it today. Let's get ready to receive. All right, so let's talk about this discipline that is required for our destiny. If you want to maximize your destiny, if you want to become that man or woman that God has called you to be, it's going to require discipline. It's going to require this laser focus that we've been talking about, how to have this laser focus on the fixed purpose that God established for us before the world began. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 25 is our foundational scripture for the year. And so I want to read this again for your hearing. This is what the Bible says. Proverbs 4 and 25 from the Passion Translation. Set your gaze on the path before you with fixed purpose, looking straight ahead. Ignore life's distractions. Put in the chat, I look straight ahead. Put in the chat, I ignore life's distractions. My, I'm setting my gaze. I'm locked in. Ephesians 2 and 10 says, God has made us what we are. Now, in Christ Jesus, God made us a new people. Why, Paul? so that we would spend the rest of our, our lives doing the good works that God had before ordained for us to do. So there's good works that I'm supposed to be doing. There are good works that you're supposed to be doing. And we should spend the remainder of our days after we're born again, doing the good works that God called us to do. So I have three points to share with you in this morning. So what does this mean for you today? I have three things, but before I get to the three things, I need to set the stage. I was having a conversation with Nikita. Nikita is watching. Um, I was having a conversation with Nikita uh, last night on my way to, to church, to so the mighty men, mighty men of valor. And I was talking about the story of burning the boats. <laughs> and uh, some people know, you know, this sto story, some don't. Um, and so some attribute it to Alexander the Great. Others attribute it to Hernan Cortez. So whether it's Hernan Cortez or Alexander the Great, bottom line is, let me tell you the story. This is what, it, you know, what it comes down to. So in the story, you have a military leader and you have a body of water. On the other side of the body of water, there's the enemy. The enemy is fierce. The soldiers on this side know that we're about to cross this river. We're about to go fight. But man, it's, it's going to be rough. And so what, what, the, what the story goes is that the, the commander then takes the soldiers on the boats and they cross the body of water and they make whatever many trips that they need. Once all the soldiers on the other side, he burnt the boats. And burning the boats was saying, we're not going back, right? Because if I leave the boats here, then some of y'all might get scared and jump in the boat and go back to the other side. 
So now once you burn the boats, there's no turning back. So put in the in the chat, there's no turning back. So you got to develop this like no turning back type of mentality. The word decide, to decide, decide, D, means, um, well, the whole word means to cut away, right? So so when you take D and then cides, the, the Latin word or the Latin root word for decide, it means to cut away. So I'm cutting away all alternatives. So when I make a decision, what I'm doing is I'm cutting everything else away. So when I burn the boats, I don't have the option of going back. When I make a decision, I'm cutting away the alternatives. If you want to develop discipline, like people ask me all the time, like, you know, I'm going to talk about it today. People say, man, how do you have the discipline to do something like today's word? And you've been doing it for over 26 years. How do you have the discipline to just get up? Like my life in the morning, my Monday through Friday from like 5.15 a.m. to about 8.15 a.m. is today's word. Before I do anything else, that's three solid hours of today's word, right? And um, it's like, how do you have the discipline? to do that day in and day out. How did you have the discipline to do that when you were in Iraq? How did you have the discipline to do that when you were in the Pentagon? How did you have the discipline to do that when you were in Bosnia? How did you have the discipline to do that when you were in Korea and you were working for a four-star? Well, if I had an early morning flight with my boss who was a four-star and I had to leave the house at three or four in the morning, sometimes I did today's word at one o'clock in the morning. And so how do you have that kind of discipline? Well, I don't give myself the option, right? Like I burned the boats in my heart and in my mind. I don't give myself the option because if you give yourself the option of not doing something, then you're probably not going to do it. There will be moments of time where you choose that option. You choose that alternative. Proverbs 4 and 25 is telling us to set our gaze, right? It's a fixed purpose. Ephesians 2 and 10 is telling us that we got to spend the rest of our lives doing the good works that God had before ordained for us to do. If you're going to live that way, then you can't look sideways. You can't look to the left. You can't look to the right. You can't look backwards. Like if I'm created for good works, I got to go do these good works. Uh, Proverbs 4 and 25 says, I'm looking straight ahead. And so if I'm looking straight ahead, I'm not looking back. If I'm looking straight ahead, I'm not looking to the left. I'm not looking to the right. I'm locked in. I burnt the boats. I cut it away. I don't have an alternative because if you give yourself the alternative, then there will be moments where you are going to take yourself up on the offer to not do it. So if you don't give yourself the option to not do it, then guess what? It, it, you will be amazed at the type of determination that you can, that you can develop when you know that quitting is not an option, when you have not given yourself the option to do anything else, because if quitting is an option, then there will be moments when you're going to quit. So what does this mean for you today? Let me give you these three things for you this morning. This is going to be good. You ready? Three things. Here's number one. Embracing God's predestined path is the ultimate commitment. Like I'm telling you, Ephesians 2 and 10 say, says, there's a path that is laid out before us. That's Hebrews 12, Ephesians 2 and 10. There's this path that's laid out before us, and it's a predestined path. And if you decide that I'm going to go down that path, that's the ultimate commitment. But if you want to go down that path, you got to burn the boats. You got to make a decision to cut away. You got to make a decision that, you know what, I'm not going to give myself the license to do anything else. Because if you ever give yourself the license to quit or to maybe I'm not then you will take yourself up on that option. You don't want to do that. You want to recognize laziness as the enemy's attack, uh, 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 attempt, or maybe even your own attempt to anchor your boats upon the shore of complacency. Let me say that again. Laziness is an attempt either by the devil or by you to anchor your boats on the shore of complacency, meaning I'm not going. I'm not going to do it. I don't feel like it. I'm in the bed. I don't. Do you know how many times I get up in the morning and I don't feel like doing today's work? So what? I'm not going to give myself the option not to do it. If I gave myself the option not to do it, then I just wouldn't do it, right? But I'm, I'm, I, I've never given myself the option not to do it. So I just get up and I do it. So I'm talking about you can, you can overcome complacency. You can overcome procrastination if you don't give yourself the option to not do it. You got to actively see yourself launching out to become the man or the woman that God has called you to be. You got to burn the boats in your heart and in your mind where there's no fallback plan. Put in the chat, no fallback plan. Put in the chat, 
No plan B. I've taught a lot on the no plan B. If you're living by faith, then there's no plan B. If you really believe that God told you something, then that's what you have to do. If you have a plan B, you don't really believe it. <laughs> if you really believe it, then you don't have a plan B. If you have a plan B, then you don't really believe it. Put in the chat, no plan B. Like, like I don't have, like there's some things that I'm pursuing and I don't have a plan B. Because if I had a plan B, if I had a fallback back, back plan, then I really don't believe God's, what God said. If I believe what God said, I can't be planning for failure. A plan B is a plan for failure. A plan B is a plan like, well, if this don't work out, you know, like, oh, you know, for, uh, uh, let me just, you know, because what if this don't work out? I have an alternative. If you go into a marriage, I was just at a wedding this weekend. If you go into a marriage saying, okay, I'm going to set up, I'm going to make sure I have my bank account on the side, you know, because if this don't work out, I need to have, no, you are planning to fail. <laughs> like I'm telling you right now, if you start, if you go into a, a marriage with that mentality, with a plan B in your hip pocket, no, you're planning to fail. You got to cut away all alternatives. Like uh, I didn't, I didn't put this in my notes, but let me just share it with you real quick. I was talking to Nikita about this last night. There was a, a National Geographic. I saw this years ago. Was doing all of this. You know how they do? They go out and they talk to all these tribes and stuff. And they they came across this tribe in Africa, and they were talking to this tribe, and they noticed that you know all the couples and all the kids and all of that. And so they they wanted to ask the the, the couples like how how common is divorce? And so they had to learn their language to try to communicate with them. And they were like, what do you mean? And they tried to explain like, well, you know, divorce, like how many of you have ever gotten a divorce? And it was like, well, what do you mean? And then the more they asked, the more they, they pursued it, the more they realized that within that tribe, within their language, within their dialect, there was no word for divorce. And since there was no word for divorce, they never had any. Think about the power of that. Since they didn't, they never defined divorce. They never even have a, they, in their dictionary, there's no word for divorce. So they don't have divorces. Why? Because if you give yourself the option, right? I'm saying like they, they, they never even defined it. If you cut away, if you burn the boats, if you don't give yourself the option, then you're going to go out there. You have no other alternative. You have to go do it. If you burn the boats, you can't go back. Like, I mean, like it's forward ever, backward never. So walking with God, listen, there are going to be many times where you don't feel like doing stuff, but you have to develop this mentality. Okay. But let me, let me, let me do say, I, I do need to say something about walking with God for the long haul, right? Because I don't want you to think that you got to have this like burn the boats mentality every day, every day, every day. Like I'm a warrior. No. So there are times, think of a family or an organization and an army. There are times, put in the chat, family, organization, and army. There are times where you're, you're like last night, we uh, at our church, the men got together and it was like a family, right? We, we had men, we talked about men stuff, we had pizza, we hung out and, and we were there to support one another. We ministered to one another. There are times where the body of Christ is a family and you, you, God is our father. We're there for our brothers and sisters. We're hanging out. We love it, right? You know, we just, just being like a family. This weekend, we had a wedding. One of my brothers, one of my sisters got married. So we were there hanging out like a family, right? Sometimes it's a family. Other times it's an organization. So after we did the family stuff last night, uh, me and my wife are teaching married couples tonight. So I had to tell the guys, hey, I need this these tables. I need these couches. Isabella said <laughs> she wants these couches like this. Y'all don't want to mess with my wife, right? You know, we need these couches set up. And so we need these couches. We need these tables, you know, blah, blah, blah. And now there's organization mode, right? So I went from family mode to organization mode. But there are times where you have to be in army mode. And in army mode, when you're in the middle of a faith fight, if I walk into a, a hospital room and somebody's at the brink of, of, of death, right? And at that time, and that moment, this is not fellowship time. If there's people in the room that don't believe God, y'all need to get out. This is not time for, oh, hey, how you doing? How's your girl? How's your cousin? How's your daughter? How's, you know, no, 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 no. This is, this is army mode, right? This is like, we need to pray right now. And if you're not in believe mode, you need to get out. I don't want anybody in here speaking negative. I don't want anybody in here speaking, speaking death. We want to release our faith. We want to believe God. We're going to plead the blood of Jesus. So there are times where you're in family mode. There are times when you're in organizational mode. There's times when you're in army mode. And when you're in army mode, listen, you got to have this mentality that I burn the boats and I cut away all, all alternatives and I'm not moving back and it's forward ever, backward, never. The best is yet to come. Say amen to that. Put in the chat, I have 
a warrior spirit. When I burn the boats, I'm, I'm developing a warrior spirit. I don't have any other alternatives. And this is the type of discipline and determination that is required to push through all the challenges, all the alternatives to fulfill God's plan. When you see yourself in the kingdom of God, when you see yourself as a child of the most high God and you see yourself as destined, you got to develop the discipline required to walk out your destiny and to, to become the man or the woman that God has called you to be forward ever, put in the chat, forward ever, backward never, the best is yet to come. You got it? All right, that was number one. Number two, cutting off distractions. The discipline of decision. When you make a decision, man, there's discipline in that decision. The word decide, once again, Latin word to cut off. When you cut off all alternatives, then you don't have anything else but whatever you left behind. And whatever you left behind is what you're going to do. Because if you give yourself the option as a human to, to do something else, then as a human, there will be moments where you choose the path of least resistance. So let me say it this way, because there's some army people watching, um, you know, and military people can understand what I'm about to say. When I was in the army, I would always, you know, invite people to my church and I would say, hey man, why don't you come to church on Sunday? And I just used Fort Hood because I saw Monique on here. Charlie Mike, well, Charlie Mike and I was at, at Fort Bragg, but when I was at Fort Bragg, I wasn't born again. So let me use Fort Hood. So I was at Fort Hood. Uh, I went to Marlboro Heights Missionary Baptist Church and I would tell people, man, why don't you come to church on Sunday? And a lot of times people say, all right, cool, man. I'll try to make it. And they say, what? And they say, I try to make it. So Monique's husband was my battalion commander and we had PT at 630 in the morning. And so, which means that I had to be there like 6.15 a.m. And so let's say that they would say, oh, I'm going to try to make it. I would say, oh, really? Um, are you going to be at PT tomorrow? And they'd be like, yeah. I mean, they look at me stupid. Like, why, why you even ask that? Of course I got to be at PT tomorrow. Oh, okay. Are you going to try to be there? And they would look at me like, what? And I'd say, are you going to try to be at PT? Physical training. And they go, uh, no. Uh, oh, you're just going to be there. Yeah. And, they, and they, didn't, they didn't get it. They didn't get what I was saying. You see, in their mind, they didn't give themselves the option not to go to PT. Because if you gave yourself the option not to go to PT, then there will be days where you didn't go to PT. But since you never gave yourself the option not to do it, then you just went. Your body just showed up at 630 formation <clears throat> every day because you never gave yourself the option not to do it. Even when people came from the club at five o'clock in the morning, smelling like alcohol, they still showed up at 6.30 a.m. Why? Because they never gave themselves the option not to do it. Do you see, do you understand the power of discipline? Do you, do you understand like when you burn the boats in your heart and in your mind, when you cut away all alternatives, you just show up. Put in the chat, I'm just going to show up. If you don't give yourself the option not to do it, then you can't. Now, let me say this. If you give yourself the option not to do it, if, if in your mind there's an option button, then there will be moments where you press that option button. That if you give yourself the option not to go to church, if you give yourself the option not to do whatever it is that God has called you to do, then yeah, there will be days where you press that option button. But if you don't give yourself the option, then you're going to get your little happy self up and you're going to go. Even if you, ne if you didn't get much sleep or no sleep at all, you would just go. Why? Because the discipline is developed by eliminating all the other alternatives. You are cutting away all the alternatives. You don't even consider it as an option. And since you don't consider it as an option, newsflash, you won't take yourself up on that option. You just go do it. So if you want to fulfill the goals that God has established for you, you got to, and if you want grit, determination, discipline, Rick, how are you so disciplined? Don't give yourself the option. How do you overcome procrastination? Don't give yourself the option. You got to, and provide immediate obedience. Remember I told you, delayed obedience is disobedience. You got to provide immediate obedience. Put in the chat, immediate obedience. Why? Because if you overthink it, when God tells you to do something, if you sit there and you say, mm, let me think about that. No, if you start thinking about it, you're going to think yourself out of it. You just need to provide immediate obedience. Because if you start, if you overthink it, you're not going to do it. When Jesus told Peter, Peter's like, Lord, is that you? If that's you, bid me to come on the water. Jesus said, come. He got out the boat because if he sat there thinking about it, he was not going to get out the boat. You see what I'm saying? Like you can't overthink this stuff. You just have to cut away all distractions, burn the boats 
and go do it. Number three, last point for today, no turning back. Put in the chat, no turning back. The, t- the determination to conquer. You have to have this no turning back. I-, I refuse to quit. When you have a mission and you have the clarity of the mission, I told you before that the more clear you see the vision from God, the stronger the pull. You're going to be pulled into your destiny. And the more clear you see the vision, the stronger the, bull- the pull is going to be. And it's always with God forward, ever backward, never the best is yet to come. So you want to approach every challenge with the tenacity I call it bulldog tenacity to not give up, to burn the boats, to cut away all distractions, right? That's how I do today's word. That's how this is, you know, year number 27. I've never given myself the option not to do it. I just get up and I do it. And if I'm going to do it, I just do it. Because if you give yourself the option not to, I keep repeating myself because I'm driving this home. You Listen, if you want to overcome physical and spiritual laziness, you got to make a decision. There's power in just making a decision and being committed that nothing is going to stop you. If you want to finish strong in 2024, you have to develop in your mind. I don't have an option, but I don't have any other option but to succeed. I don't have any other option but to do it. Uh, I don't have any other option but to win. Put in the chat, winning is my only option, right? <laughs> Fulfillment, uh, completion is my only option. If you, if you, I, I just close with this. Um, If you're running a race and your goal is to finish and you're not worried about time, but you're like, you know, I have to finish and I can't not finish, then you're going to finish no matter how long it takes. But if you give yourself the option to quit, then when you get, when you're getting all of those pains while you're running, then there are people, I've seen it. You're running the race and they just stop and walk away and go off the course and go get in their car and they drive home. Why? Because they gave themselves the option to quit. Put in the chat. Quitting is not an option. Oh man, this is good. This is some good teaching. And this is part of the determination that we require to set our gaze, ignore life's distractions, and and live with a fixed purpose. So let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and speak this over your life. Say this. Say, Father, I declare that I live with a laser focus on your fixed purpose. I have a commitment to the path you set before me. And I cut away everything else. I renounce laziness and distractions. I am locked in on your divine calling for my life. I burn the boats of complacency and I develop divine discipline. I vow to focus solely on your assignment And I have an unwavering commitment to your divine will. I overcome procrastination. I'm quick to obey. I do whatever you tell me to do. And I press on pursuing your vision for my life. And I will never turn back. Greater is coming for me. Because I'm determined to walk out the destiny that you planned for me before the world began. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Tomorrow I have another one. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, if you're not getting my notes, think about everything I covered today. You could have those notes for free. And if you don't have my notes, go to todaysword.org, click on the big red subscribe button on the top right, put in your email address. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. Listen, I love you. God loves you more. Have an amazing day. I want you to go into the chat right now. Leave me some comments if this word was a blessing to you. Tell me how it was a blessing to you. And then number two, share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. Greater is coming for you. Burn the boats. All right. I'll talk to you tomorrow morning. God bless you. If you enjoyed this content and you would like to know more about our ministry or you would like to partner with us in what we're doing in the Caribbean, being a blessing to Haitian children in the Dominican Republic, then please go to ripministries.org. You'll be able to find out more information there. And if you'd like to make a donation, all the donations are tax deductible in the United States. A few months ago, the Lord impressed it upon my heart to set up a coaching and mentorship program. And Isabella and I set that up. And so now we make ourselves available on three different levels for those that want access to us and to learn things about maximizing your potential, increasing your personal productivity and fulfilling your life's purpose. If you're interested in that, go to patreon.com forward slash Rick Pena. And then lastly, 
The Lord impressed it upon my heart to write several books and journals to help people grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please go to rickpina.co if you don't have our material, and there's also apparel there as well. Listen, thank you for being a blessing to us. We pray that our ministry will continue to be a blessing to you.